It's the George Plaster Show, 30 years of the best sports talk in Middle Tennessee, featuring Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer Watson Brown. And it's a shame it's taken this long to get an introduction for this Tennessee Sports Hall of Famer, Kelly Holcomb, along with young gun Billy Derrick. And now, here's your host, George Plaster. Hello again, everybody. Welcome in on a beautiful Friday. Beautiful for several reasons. Number one, the sun's out. Number two, it's not raining. Number three, it's Friday. (laughs) Thank God. And we welcome all of you in. Kelly Holcomb not with us today. Billy Derrick is. We got a good show for you. So if you're watching us live, Hope you will stick around. Billy, if you will, go ahead and put the uh, sports speaker thing up there real quickly. So next Wednesday, uh, we will have another one of our Wilson Bank and Trust sports speaker series here at the Ford Ice Center out in Bellevue, where we invite a, quote, live studio audience, if that's what you want to call it. The legendary Alabama play-by-play voice Eli Gold and former Titans head coach Jeff Fisher. They'll be here. We already have close to 100 signed up already. If you're just learning about this, do me a favor. If you want to come to it, we've got room for you, but let me know that this weekend so I can hold seats for you. Simply email me. Uh, plastergeorge at gmail.com. Again, plastergeorge at gmail.com. We're going to have some fun. This one uh, will be anything but dull. Yeah, I got a feeling this is going to be fun. Two of the better personalities we've had um, on stage. I know we've had, we've uh, we've certainly had some good ones. Uh, Barry Trotz. I mean, you know, Barry had no filter that whole time. I mean, he was cracking jokes left and right, but I think Eli and Jeff are both uh, are both going to, you're going to give some laughs to everybody there. I think you're right. Anyway, looking forward to it. There's a lot going on. It looks like Kentucky has a coach. Let's get into it. Yeah, Mark Pope, uh, former Kentucky Wildcat, won a national title under Rick Patino. And before we get into it, uh, this was his reaction to him not being able to to go to Rupp Arena. I, I don't, I'm don't. i not sure if this was this year or not or, or within the last couple years. He wasn't able to make it when they were honoring the 1996 national title team. Yeah. But here's the video uh, that he sent for them to play on the Jumbotron uh, because he wasn't there. Hello, University of Kentucky. Man, I wish I could be there with you guys tonight. It's impossible for me to describe how much I love this university, my teammates, and you fans. But I'm going to try. C-A-T-S, Cats, Cats, Cats. I love you guys. 
He's got some energy now. C. <laughs> yeah. So um, you better make sure he spells it right, because if he puts an R in there to start cards, they'll get rid of him. <laughs> they do that one in Louisville. So there's going to be a mixed reaction to this. No, he is not the big name that they were looking for. And, you know, due to the time of the year, it's a little late. And the fact that coaching isn't as much fun as it used to be and some people that probably would have jumped at the job 10 years ago suddenly had no interest. So they settle on Pope, who probably isn't going to win the press conference other than the fact that he was on that 96 national title team that obliterated the world. Holy cow, I know, because my two Vanderbilt teams, uh, the, the two games against them lost by something like a combined 83. Uh, they, were, they were a powerhouse. He's not going to win the press conference, but he is a solid basketball coach who's done a very good job at BYU. Billy, I think his first big job when he gets there is to meet with his former teammate, Jeff Shepard, yep. to try to somehow get Reed Shepard to stay at Kentucky and not go. Yeah, I've heard they've, they've been in communication. That's going to be tough. I mean, Reed Shepard is going to be a top five. We've seen him maybe number one overall. I know a which, lot of which I'll, have... Look, I'll admit I don't agree with it. Um, Either way. I, I, I'm hard-pressed to believe his foot speed is going to guard the Darius Garlands of the NF NBA, but what do I know? I'm not a talent scout. It's just a gut feeling. He's a really good player. Boy, I like him a lot. Yeah. But do I think he's going to guard the Darius Garlands of the world? Um, I don't. No, I mean, he's going to have a lot of development to, to, to work on, but at the end of the day, if, if Pope is able to keep him for, for another year, I mean, that's going to send that would some shockwaves. That be a huge win. Because there's a lot of Kentucky fans initially, obviously, that were not happy about this. And, uh, you know, I think now the natural progression of it, you, you start to maybe go back and watch some videos and hear from people. Rick Pitino put out a video today. It's about two minutes long. Uh, and he, this was obviously a joke. Maybe it wasn't, but he said, hey, if, I'll write the, the check if y'all need NIL. Rick, Rick Pitino did. But, uh, you know, it. That, that's just what happens with these hires. Um, Supposedly, they're going to offer Shepard uh, something in the neighborhood of two to three million, is what Lexington friends of mine yeah. are telling me. Which is ridiculous. And if you're Insane. Shepard, Ooh. you know, I, I, that's, it's might be, be more than you get in the NBA contract. Yeah, exactly. But it's interesting. Mark Pope is the oldest coach Kentucky has ever hired. I bet really? You, I bet you didn't know that. No, I didn't. How? Yeah, okay, his, so Shepard would be. 15, let's go 50, maybe. Yeah, I, I think you're right. His first year, Pope's first year as a coach was the same year John Calipari came to Kentucky 15 years ago. Um, and, you know, we brought him up yesterday, I think early, as yeah. he could be an option, you know, but we, we didn't really talk a ton about it. I mean, it's not like we hear Mark Pope and you go, oh, there's your guy. So I get the feeling, and I don't know this. He's actually 51, by the okay. way. Okay. Mitch Barnhart, uh, I think, probably was not wild about hiring another flamboyant coach. And Bruce Pearl certainly is. Mm -hmm. He went with a lot more low-key, only time will tell if it's the right thing. Uh, will he get a little extra help, you know, uh, a little more benefit of the doubt? Because he was part of a title team, yeah. maybe. I hope so for his case. Yeah, you just for also his sake. part of me feels bad for him coming in here. I mean, you know, he's going to be making a lot of money, but the, similar to Kalen DeBoer, you know, he he wasn't going to be praised as soon as he was hired at Alabama. That this isn't going to be praised either. Uh, but he was offered a five year deal at an average of five and a half million per year. So that that's uh, that's what he'll be making. They and, saved a lot of money. Yeah, exactly. They saved $33 million, to be exact. And, you know, I think at the end of the day, George, this was the best move, not the hire exactly, but getting Calipari out 
and bringing someone else in is what everybody wanted, right? I mean, that's what most Kentucky fans wanted. Now that someone else, I don't know if they specifically wanted Mark Pope. Obviously, we'll figure out if this is a good hire or not. But let's not forget that Calipari was on his last leg at Kentucky, and and it was not good. Um, You know, I'm not saying people are forgetting that, but it's just you got a new guy in, and it's a fresh start. It is a fresh start. That's the most important thing. Here's what we'll never really know. He and Mitch Barnhart did not get along. And for Calipari, this goes back to when Barnhart didn't give him the time of day when he hired Billy Gillespie. When that didn't work, all of a sudden there was a lot of pressure on Barnhart to hire Calipari. And Calipari was pissed, and he made it clear to Barnhart in a meeting that I know about before he ever got hired that was a Donnybrook. Mm. And so it was never going to be a love fest. Um It'll be real interesting to um, to see where all this goes. Yeah, they're going to introduce him on Sunday at three thirty at Rupp Arena. So that's uh, that's they what might we have twenty four thousand there for that. They really might. And I'm interested. He's got some energy. He's going to do something to fire the fans up. Hopefully, he does C-A-T-S. that. C-A-T-S. Yeah, hopefully he'll, he'll do that again. But they got one of their former players, and I think we had mentioned that. Where's a is there a Kentucky guy? Yeah, you know, um, NBA not a ton. College-wise, people kind of glossed over Pope, and now they're bringing him in. So There's a chance this is a very solid hire. Yeah. The guy knows basketball. I've watched his BYU teams. They were pretty good. They were. He was at Utah Valley, I think, Yeah, and I don't know much about BYU. And, yeah. I mean, I don't need – is that D1? <laughs> at, uh, yes, and – not seems like a year ago Utah Valley may have been in the NIT. Okay. Anyway, whatever. But two schools again that it's hard to make tournaments there. You would have thought he would have made. Um, well, he did make the tournament at BYU, of course, but they, he hasn't won a tournament game. Yeah. No conference tournament titles either. But so what? It's not like he was there. Yeah. <laughs> for twelve years. So. Move on. Uh, we got the Masters. Going on, of course, right now, Bryson DeChambeau and Scotty Scheffler tied atop the leaderboard at 7-under. Max Homa playing well as well at 6-under. Danny Willett is uh, in fourth at 5-under. Tiger is plus two right now. Doesn't look like he's going to uh, make the cut. So let me ask this question because he had to play five holes, um, you know, for his first round early this morning, and they were saying that, he wasn't walking, um, you know, anywhere near as good as he was yesterday. Would it shock you if Tiger, in his press conference at the end of this Masters, said, "This is um, it. Yeah, I've I, done everything I know how to do." I wouldn't be surprised. Part of him heading in here would probably thought, "I'm going to give this one last try. I mean, I'm going to try to go out there, see what happens." If if I get a lot of luck, you know, if I make a miracle shot or two and make the cut, you know, and get close, maybe he keeps going, plays another major, but I would not be surprised about that. The the level I mean, why of, not play try to play in one more master? I don't then, know. The level of prep that he has to go through yeah. to to get himself ready. Whew, it is it's hard it's hard to watch though, too. I mean, it's not like he's playing awful, but you want him to do well. You want him to get to Sunday. You want him. You want another performance like was it 2019, where uh, he ended up winning it for the last time. You do. You want Probably another. Probably his last great moment. Yeah, you want another moment like that so bad. But it's. I mean, it's the end of an era. And I think we knew his time was coming to a close and might have already been. Yeah. Ended. So, uh, the Masters going on. Scheffler and DeChambeau uh, atop the leaderboard there at seven under tonight. Preds are in Chicago to play the Blackhawks seven thirty. Puck drop. Preds are favored. Blackhawks are struggling. And uh, I think a lot of them are ready for that season to be over up there. But the Preds can get another point or two here tonight if they uh, if they get it done. So uh, they got they're going to need they're, they're going to need. It, it seems to me the way this thing is shaking out. Um, they probably need four to six points out of these last three games. The three games being tonight in Chicago, Columbus here tomorrow, and Pittsburgh on the road Monday. If they're going to get to the seven hole, that's what I think they got to have. 
Yeah, you can't you can't go over, obviously. Um, no. What do you think? So you're saying four out of six, four out of possible six. Four out of five, five out of five, or six out of six. I think they've got to have one of those numbers to hang up on the board to get themselves the seven hole. Would you rather play Vancouver or Dallas? Vancouver right now by a pretty considerable amount. So you don't want any part of Dallas? Uh, You know, not right now, but who knows? I mean, Dallas is on a roll, but that can all change. If they end up with Dallas, then you got to say, well, a lot less travel and that helps and who knows. Is that overrated? I mean, I know. Oh, I don't think so. Listen, the year, I don't remember what year it was when they beat Anaheim in in a seven-game series where they had to make three trips to Anaheim, they get to game seven of a San Jose series out there yeah. where they had to make um, – And they were dead. Yeah. They, yeah, they, I remember and, that. And so I do think it's a big deal. But it still doesn't take your thinking away from – even though Dallas, the travel, wouldn't be an issue at all – you would still rather play Vancouver because I was talking about that with somebody. They were saying, "No, I, I don't would want... rather I would rather play Vancouver." Yeah, and 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 if they get Vancouver, that part of that side of the bracket, I think Gee was talking about this, but the Preds would avoid some some scary matchups. And I don't have the bracket in front of me. I'm, we might might yeah, take a look I'll at it. Yeah, I'll be later. honest. I don't know. And it's I not even seen it. Yet, of course, I haven't seen the projection based yeah. on where they are today. So I, I don't really know. Yeah, and it's probably smart to just wait for <laughs> wait for the official. Well, God knows I've that, played this game for two months now. Um, so yeah, but Preds Blackhawks tonight seven thirty, and that's all I got. That's the update. That's the update. Okay, we'll give it a a B minus. Not a lot on the uh, not on not the, the meat today. on the bone. <laughs> no. Okay, after the break, Greg Pogue's going to join us. Pogi is now part of the Nashville Cats ownership group. And the Cats are the arena football team that will play here starting, let me see, two weeks from tomorrow is their opener. It's a home opener down at the auditorium where they're going to play this year. They'll play five of their six at Municipal Auditorium. They'll play a game in Clarksville. Um. Then at 3 o'clock, Vandy Athletic Director Candace Lee will join us, and I want to get her to talk about what the search was like. What did she learn about how the coaches around the country perceive that job and what's next, all that kind of stuff. So stick around. Hopefully we'll uh, keep you entertained. Pogies in the on-deck circle. He will join us next. It was the most horrible experience that any mother could ever go through. I knew that I needed to get help. My friend, she immediately said, you need to call Bart Durham. And you guys were there within an hour. You guys are like family for us. Yeah, sure is nice to connect with the people that you're doing your best to help. As the trusted premier custom home builder in Middle Tennessee, Donnelly Timmons has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Whether you're looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and every remodel is unique, luxurious, and completed on time within budget. Founders Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly have over 25 years of construction experience in the Nashville area. Together, they have completed projects in Forest Hills, Oak Hill, Green Hills, Franklin, and Brentwood. Dustin and Joey believe that communication is the most important aspect of all construction projects. Therefore, they personally manage each project themselves and are involved in job site activities on a daily basis. Their commitment to quality and integrity has earned them an outstanding reputation among their clients. Contact them to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects. Give them a call at 615-456-7983 or log on to DonleyTimmons.com. 
I'm Watson Brown. I'm Kelly Holcomb. I'm Billy Derrick. We're the George Plaster Show. We've been Nashville's best sports talk for the last 30 years. And you know what? We still are. Catch us live weekdays from 2 to 4 p.m. Central Time in Nashville on YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Also, the podcast version is available on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Looking for more than just awards and trophies? Southern Trophy House is your one-stop solution. For over 60 years, their team has created lasting impressions with a personalized touch. From embroidery to screen-printed apparel to corporate awards, signs, and name badges, they have everything you need to keep your brand shining bright. With their knowledgeable customer service team, you can relax as they create, produce, pack, and ship merchandise and awards on time and on budget. That includes etched crystal awards, custom-cut acrylic, name badges, embroidered Richardson ball caps, banners, screen-printed T-shirts, laser-engraved Yeti cups, and knives. Recognize your hard-working team from Southern Trophy House, where they do their best to help you recognize your best. Located at 2705 Nolansville Pike in Nashville, give them a holler, 615-256-7295. Visit southerntrophy.com, Southern Trophy House, for all your personalization and recognition needs. Nashville cats play clean as country water. Nashville cats play wild as mountain dew. Nashville cats been playing since these babies. Nashville cats. Well done. So, Pokey was on with us a minute ago and disappeared into uh, outer space. So. Uh, an email he sent me says that he is a partner and vice president of community relations. Wow. <laughs> Big title. Big old title for Pogi. Yeah. Yeah, we had him and now we don't. So, well, yeah, he's probably driving around God only knows where. There he is. Uh, looks like he's, oh, now we've got him properly. Let's bring him up. Hello, vice president. Unmute your mic first, Pogi. We're off to a slow start on this. No, that's okay. I'm, you know, I'm technically challenged. I challenged? It, so. Are you challenged to my level of challenged? No, I think okay. I've surpassed you. So okay. I'm, I'm, yeah. So I let's, am. let's check out the logo. Let's check out the hat. Okay. Very nice. Mm -hmm. So you realize you're two weeks and one day away from your opener. Kind of tell yep. people what all's going to go on here. Well, we're right now halfway through training camp over at Lipscomb Academy. Jamie Graham, uh, Devin Arnold, the former head coach of Antioch, they've taken over there, you know, and, and we've struck up a really good partnership with them. Uh, we're, I, I, I'm, I'm not kidding you when I say this. I've just sort of like, <laughs> just sit back and watch our game day production is going to be as good as this city has seen our, I guess, yeah, we, I love it. We announced our, uh, our, our, our cheer team yesterday. I guess you probably already have signed and, and already had a few of those on They're They're very talented. Um, our height team will be wearing gold shoes uh, we're doing a major you, municipal auditorium will never have looked better. Uh, thanks to Chuck McDowell and his partnerships. Uh, and, and so the football side of it, Dean Kikinos just in coach Shaq Shackelford, who's our, our raw. I don't know that well, I'm, I'm not kidding you. <laughs> I don't think we'll lose a game. I mean, we've got you. You've met Charlie Brewer, who may or may not be our quarterback, because we got a few in there, and 
and and we got like eight to ten power five uh, you know established people who are wanting to take that next lap uh, you know leap up so it's um yeah it's 15 days away and it's it's really so we've all sort of been drinking water out of a fire hose right now but the things that are coming together because it's more about football it's more about we want to have a big party and maybe a football game will break out and that's sort of where we are right now okay talk to me about the auditorium because there are people out there who will immediately say, well, I'm not going down there. Okay, yeah, because they're old. Because they're old. Because yeah. they're old. I'm going to give you an example of this. My daughter's okay, 30 years to. old. Okay, I'm going to my do- my son-in-law's 32 years old, Kyle. My daughter, you've met Grace, obviously, several times. They went to a concert there right as Jeff Fisher and I were being brought in with Tamara, Nancy, and now Chuck McDowell, the ownership group. And, and they went to a concert there. It was sold out. And I said, when you bought your tickets, was there any trepidation about going to the municipal auditorium? She goes, Dad, I don't I know why. I said, well, how was it? It was fine. Well, how were the bad? They put over, they put $2 million in the renovation in it, and we're putting much more in it. You will not recognize it. You will not recognize the signage. You won't recognize anything. Chuck and his benevolence and Janny King, that thing's got a major scrub that we wanted to just take. And, 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 and so you and I in that realm of having basketball. Oh, we lost Pogi. Hold on. Greg, hold up. We've lost you somewhere in there. Sorry. What do we think? Okay, try it again because I thought I heard you. Uh, maybe not. Oh, we're not hearing him now. Um, then why don't we do this? Why don't we call him and just do the rest of this by phone? Um, I will hand over some contact info and we will continue. I've got it. I've got it. You got him. Okay. Pogi, if you can hear me, we're going to try to do the rest of this by phone because God only knows where you are. Uh, it just sort of weaved in and wait, weaved out. Um, so we'll get to this here in just a second. Bear with us. And um, anyway, their home opener is uh, April 27th. Pogi's back on with us. Pogi, the last we heard from yeah. you was a little bit about the auditorium. So keep going. Right, right. Well, and, and thanks, guys. And sorry, you've been out, you've been out to my house in the woods, <laughs> you know. Yes. Um, uh, the the people who feel that way about it. I had somebody tell me the other day, ah, in this auditorium. I said, "What's the last time you went in there?" Well, it's been twenty years. Well, shut up, okay? Here's the deal. This has got a retro feel to it. Our ownership group is alone putting a lot of money into it. The signage will be there. And, and that is a hidden gem. And what we've done, what our ownership group has done, they just sit back and watch obviously, but is you will not, you will go. Wow. You're going to go. Wow. Uh, Jeff Jarrett, of course, everybody knows Jeff gave us the best advice. He said, they don't build auditoriums in the round anymore. They just build them in, you know, paperclip style so the setting is great so i don't even know if i'm on right now you are on right now okay and, good well, and i'm you. hearing everything you're but, saying uh, well good good thank you hey by the way congratulations uh monday uh april 29th four to six on wnsr i left so they freed up some money to pay you well, you know what? We have not released that information on our show yet, but you've done it for us. Uh, in it's, two, it's, in, uh, it, it's on the web. Tennessee and Mike Oregon's got it right now on its website, so I'm not breaking any news. So I'm the last to break my own news. Well, you know, take me to lunch and I'll let you break it. Okay. So uh, we're going to move the show in two weeks to a 4 to 6 p.m. time slot. We will continue with the format you may be watching right now live, but what we're also going to do is simulcast it on radio 
The big advantage for us is we now get a phone system, which we have wanted uh, in the 30 plus years I've done this. Phones are an important piece of it, and we just haven't had that, and I've really missed it. So I'm looking forward in two weeks uh, to all of that changing when we go 4 to 6 p.m. So talk to me about Eli, because the timing of that was uh, bizarre and really good. Well, I didn't mean to jump out in front of you. It's in Mike Oregon's notes column on Tennessean.com right now. Right. So it's, you're doing it. Um, so, yeah, it, 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 but our team, this, this team is like half of them are ready to go to an NFL camp right now. And I'm not exactly, you know, I don't deal in hyperbole. I'm blown away. I don't think we'll lose a game. I really mean that. <laughs> and, and so, and then the Arena Football League Championship will be right here in Nashville in, in uh, July. I'm sure the coaching staff appreciates you putting this out here. Uh, <laughs> so you're, you're feeling pretty good about the roster that Jeff Fisher and others have assembled. Well, Dean Kikino's Jeff, Jeff's taking a step back, and, and it's really cool for him to see uh, he's not involved with personnel and coaching. He's, he, we're more worried about, do we have a trainer and a, a, a doctor, right? I mean, just the business component of the, of it, but, uh, yeah, it's, um, I don't know how to be impressed quite frankly, but I mean, we're talking about Texas A&M, Ole Miss, Washington, Utah, uh, Bandy, Tennessee, Baylor, you know, you and I know you've met with, you know, Charlie Brewer, uh, who's, you know, through for what, almost 10,000 yards on the collegiate level. It's hard not to be impressed. Marquise Irvin was named in the, in the arena football league, named him one of the two players to watch in the entire league. And I, and I've learned about this. He was like the rookie of the year two years ago in the, another indoor league that was based in green Bay. It's really amazing how many of these there are and the solidification that the arena football league does with it. It's uh, and you know, and then, and now with the NFL network, uh, six of our 10 games, three home, three road are going to be on live. Uh, and the rest of them will be streaming around the world, but in through gray, which owns channel four. And, uh, so it's, um, it's, it's something it, it, this is, I don't think people realize just the potential of where arena football league can be on a international level. 2028, uh, flag football is going to be a, a sport in the Olympics. Where, do, where what's next? You tell me. I'm not sure I know. Uh, so well, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to own the Munich, uh, monarchs of the, uh, Europe, uh, arena football league. Sure you are. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me this. Why did you get involved in this? Well, you know why, Jeff. And, and, and I, you know, and our friend, obviously, and, and I don't believe yeah, it's, uh, but, you know, we, I've, I've known Jeff since 1996. I was this beat writer and we got along because, you know. You're easy I, to get I along with. The, uh, well, I mean, the Tennessee Sports Writers Hall of Fame. Okay, come on, man. And so, no, <laughs> I did it the right way. And and we became friends, and we had our paths crossed many times over the years. But the connection was Tennessee State. His son, Brandon, is the defensive coordinator for Eddie George at TSU and me being the play-by-play -play there. And so our paths crossed, crossed, crossed. And, and, and we were talking about – quite frankly, a couple other projects. When this came up, Tamar, Dad, Allen, Nancy Eckert, the founding partners, and brought Jeff, brought me, now Chuck McDowell, and, and George, you know me, this fits my skill set so well, because I'm full of crap. Well, I'm certainly not going to go there. Um, so, opening day, two weeks from tomorrow, I'm assuming everybody but Santa Claus will be there, or will Santa be there? No, I'm I'm, I'm hiring Santas. I don't feel like being groped anymore for your sake. Okay. 
<laughs> this is a you. Do you want to tell? You brought that, it up. You want to tell that one? I, you brought it up. Yeah, you opened well, the can of worms. I made Pogi B back when we had. I've, I've heard it. A wildly successful wild wild horse promotion around pre and post game uh, of Titans in the early going. We had a Christmas night game against the Dallas Cowboys. I didn't think we were going to have anybody there. Uh, it turned out we had 3,500 all the way up into the third deck of the place. It was crazy. So I made Pogi be Santa. And uh, suffice it to say, the rest is history. But I'm going to give you the opportunity here to tell us what will be going on opening night with the Cats. Well, that at 730 that night, Saturday, April 27th, Miss Fall Joint, that's the time slotted to us by the NFL Network. That afternoon on the plaza, we're having a block party, live music, uh, food trucks, inflatables, face painting. We're going to have a big party, and we may play football later. I don't know. So that's our approach. And also, you know, when you throw the ball into the stands, the fans get to keep the ball. We just ask you to throw the players back. <laughs> nice. That's well said. So I did arena football on radio for a year. Gosh, I want to say like, I want to say it was like 2001. I can't swear to that. How much different is it now from then as far as rules and, and anything about arena football that an old Cats fan who remembers the first go round? would know for now well if you want to uh just a quick view go to the nashvillecats.com for all of our ticketing and information but we have now uh, under our news section the arena football league rules you know everything from so, you know, all the different components of it you know being in the broadcast side when tv timeouts are blah 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 but have any can play and everything um there's, there's two different kinds. There's Iron Man and there's the newer version where you get more players in. And I don't know how far I can say about this, but uh, there's a lot of the owners who fear the Nashville Cats because we can get 20 players that are better than any of theirs. And and so put that on you in your pipe and smoke it. So, uh, uh, yeah, we're – it's going to be interesting to see the development of it. Let's just put it that way. Pogi, I appreciate your taking the time to come on. You are certainly a confident Pogi. Um, not going to no, lose. Just, 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 just running, just running a hundred miles an hour. And, 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 but thank everybody. I mean, we, this, this has a, it's such a niche, right? We got, what do we got? Five home games, one in Clarksville, six, four road games, Philly, Minneapolis, Orlando, and Albany, New York. Uh, and, and then, and then we, it's, it, it, it fits the market. And I'm just going to tell everybody, anyone who has a negative connotation about municipal auditorium, come down there or shut up. <laughs> That's good PR. Oh, Pogi, you are a piece of work. I can't wait to see it. I was uh, trying to think of when the last time I was in the auditorium was, and it's been a while, so I'm really looking probably forward. The, probably, the OV, probably the OVC tournament, yeah. right? That's like probably it the may OV, well OVC be. tournaments. Yeah. Yeah, OVC tournament. They, that's been, uh, there have been in Evansville now seven years, so probably eight years for you, right? Yeah. Probably so. I look forward to seeing it. Can't wait. All right. I know the product's going to be good. I know you've got a good team. So I hope well, people Eli will support Gold, it. Eli Gold, the, Eli Gold, the voice, you know, how do you, you know. And uh, by the way, plug the thing Wednesday. Come on, well, man. Well, let's do it. We already have. Show it again, Billy. Uh, so Pogi helped me put this together with Eli Gold and Jeff Fisher. We're going to do another one of our Wilson Bank and Trust Sports Speaker Series. 11.30 on Wednesday out here at the Ford Ice Center in Bellevue. Uh, it's a free event. Uh, we will have a live studio audience. We'll have over 100 folks in here watching it. And if you'd like to be a part of it, we still got room for you. Just email me at plastergeorge at gmail.com. How about that, Pogi? Yeah, uh, Pete Weber and Claudia, uh, Terry Crisp and Sheila. 
we're gonna have a we're gonna have a party. So Excellent. thanks for having us. Looking forward to it. Greg, thank you as always. Have a good weekend. All right, see you guys. All right, bye. My buddy Greg Pogue joining us to talk a little Nashville Cats. The first go round was very successful here. And I'll be interested. They've put a lot of work into this. I can't wait to see what the auditorium looks like because I believe there's a place in our city for the auditorium. No, it's not Bridgestone Arena, but it can certainly hold a lot of other events in there and be a very useful part of what goes on in our city. It's going to be fun. I'm excited. And I think he, Pogi makes a good point about, you know, making it of course it's you know you're going to a an arena football game but there's also a lot of other stuff that's going to be going on so i think that's a that's a good pull for a lot of people especially in nashville we'll go to the break on that and come back with more right after this Hit After Hit has become the baseball store in Tennessee. They have over 1,000 different models of gloves and over 1,500 wood bats. They also have several Iron Mike pitching machines as well as a Hit Tracks machine. If they don't have it, you probably don't need it. We're proud to call Hit After Hit the official shirt provider of the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. Forget the fact that Sir Speedy Music City is owned by my BGA classmate James Warren. Their work stands on its own merit. James and his staff do incredible work as evidenced by the huge banners at the Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night. If you're looking for quality to help your marketing and business communications and you want it at a reasonable price, these are your folks. Call them at 615-832-9511 or go to print at sirspeedymusiccity.com and be sure to tell them Plaz sent you. Over the years, more men have started to seek help for hormone deficiencies and imbalances. And Dr. Jeffrey Lodge and wife Daphne, along with their experienced staff, give men the treatment required to improve their quality of life, improve your immune system, energy level, cognitive function, and more. There's no better time to achieve a healthy lifestyle. What are you waiting for? Give Cool Springs MD a call today for an appointment at 615 615- 486-3458 or visit the website coolspringsmd.com For over 35 years, Wilson Bank & Trust has been committed to providing customized banking solutions to help individuals, families, and businesses in Tennessee achieve their goals. As your full-service community bank, we are proud to offer loans with competitive rates, local decision-making, and fast, friendly service from our experienced lenders. No matter where you are on your financial journey, Wilson Bank & Trust is ready to help you take the next step. Visit your nearest Wilson Bank & Trust office or online at wilsonbank.com to get started today. Member FDIC, Equal House lender. Convenience and value, two words that we expect when we do business. Our goal at JHA Company is to deliver just that, both to our school partners and to our customers. Whether you're purchasing photos, yearbooks, class jewelry, letter jackets, school spirit wear, or senior graduation products, we strive to make the experience easy, convenient, and cost-effective. Find out more at jhacompany.com or call 615-867-6345 for more information. JHA, one source, one company. Sorry about the two songs. Uh, were you trying to mix like the Mormon Tabernacle Choir in there? What what went on? Uh, you know, sometimes the mixer uh-huh. has a mind of its own. What would Kelly say? He would have ripped me. But the good thing yeah. is, moving to radio or mm-hmm. adding radio to our platform, we'll have better music. <laughs> uh, we won't be controlling it. So <laughs> that's, that's good. That's a plus. So give me some thoughts on this spring football. 
I honestly believe that the arena thing has a better shot at success than the UFL, United Football League. Yeah, I, I think I would agree because especially in a city like Nashville, um, but even in, in other cities, arena football is up close and personal. It's usually in smaller venues that are you know tight. I mean, the, the format of the field it, it itself is, is tighter and smaller. Um, and and I, I'm not saying I'm a big arena football guy, but I just think the, the style of play, the kind of excitement, I mean, I'm sure you'll, you got high scoring games, you'll have more high scoring games, you know, more points. And it's a, you know, it's about offense, I think, in, in, in the, I mean, it's, you don't look, you don't go to see, you know, these big defensive linemen sack the quarterback, you're going to see these fast athletes and, um, you know, Josh Heupel type offenses where they're throwing it really every time. Uh, now the level of play, obviously, I know Pogi is excited about their roster, um, and they've got a lot of former SEC players. And you know, we'll see how they do. The level of play potentially is is a concern and maybe a drawback. But tickets are not usually, you know, overpriced or too expensive. And uh, you know, I I agree with that. I, I think, it's, like I said, especially in Nashville, I think arena football um, can be really entertaining and really fun. Okay, here's where I'm going to go with it. Not that I've watched a lot of the UFL. I haven't. I have caught maybe a total of five minutes of play. So what I'm going to say is a little unfair. I've noticed in the UFL, the scores are not very high. Yeah. Looks like most of the games are pretty low-scoring defensive. Now, some people may like that. But I think the majority of people want much more high scoring. The NFL has certainly gone more high scoring in recent years. I think this is an area the UFL needs to look at. Here's here's the other one that, to me, makes no sense. So they've gotten these TV contracts with Fox and ABC and ESPN. And what it really means is these networks are struggling for some programming. Yeah. And so they put football on, but in some of the cities, Memphis and Birmingham to be specific, what they do, because you and I went to a game a couple of years ago, what they do to try to try to create this mirage that they got a bunch of fans is stick them all on one side, but they stick them all in the sun field. And I noticed they did that. Saturday, I got a couple of minutes of whoever Memphis was playing yeah. the Liberty Bowl. That's stupid. Okay, you don't want your fans to, first of all, anybody that does care to come out there and bake. That's a miserable yeah. thing. The other thing that I, I believe is that the arena teams will make their situations a lot more fun than the UFL has. I don't see a lot of fun stuff around the UFL. It just looks like football and kind of low-scoring football. And I don't know if their rules lead to that or, or offensively they're not very sophisticated, but I think that's a mistake. Yeah, just kind of clunky football is, is a word that comes to mind. Not very clean. And, you know, when you're – especially in spring football and, and anybody that goes to watch a game and, and is kind of scrolling through their channels you know, on the guide and they find UFL spring football on there and they click on it and it's 13 to nothing, you know, in the fourth quarter. I, right. That's usually not a, a good way of – A recipe to keep you. Yeah, keep you there. But if you turn it on and it's, you know, 45, 38, you know, even into the 50s, I, you know, that's a way to keep somebody watching just because it's fun and entertaining – and points are being scored. And I think in the UFL, when you're not doing that, and the level of play, that obviously that's that's the reason why I think the, the quarterbacks are not very good. Watson has talked about that when when uh, you know when we've had him on to talk about spring football, and he watches them. He watches all of them. I mean, he's you know football people will watch, but even football people like Watson have have said it's it's hard. I mean, I, it's hard for me to 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 stay with that. I'd rather go play golf or or do whatever. And it's in a 
the spring summer months like you said that people that go to these don't want to sit there and bake in the sun and it was weird being there it felt like too much of a made for tv product yeah it's like i'm kind of a, a puppet or a pawn here in this tv scheme <laughs> um so i i don't know i like i said i think the afl is a better model the arena football league the ufl i think has ways of, of improving their product but you know do you spend money and then not really make anything else off of it that's kind of the challenge for them it's well, here's what's going on. What is funding the UFL are these TV contracts. Yeah. When I look, I never see, other than in St. Louis, I never see any crowds that would pay the light bill. So it's TV. And TV has games in late May and June in Birmingham and Memphis during the day. Well, you and I made that mistake once. We're not going to do that again. No. I'm not going to be, you know, turned into baked Alaska just so somebody on TV can be led to believe, oh, they've got some fans in the stands. Mm -hmm. And I just think the arena deal, the concept of it being more comfortable, you know, indoors, you're not going to burn up, you're probably not going to freeze somewhere in the middle. And it just seems like they're able to put more entertainment value into it, which is what I think really sells if it's not the NFL. The NFL can pretty much stand on its own two feet and do whatever in the hell they want to do. Yep. But these others have got to think this stuff through. And I think the UFL, while they're getting TV money and they're getting on TV, I don't see that the fans are are gravitating to this at all. No, and they need to think about the venue. Um, you know, you mentioned comfort level. C- being comfortable at a game is, is is very important for sports fans. Now, I mean, now more than ever, more so than because it used you can, to be. you know, you can sit at home and watch on your seventy inch flat screen on your comfortable couch. But if you can be comfortable at the game, have some shade, you know, be able to. You know, you're gonna have to pay some money, of course, but they know that, and, and a lot of you know, a lot of fans nowadays will, as long as they're comfortable and they can go, you know, grab food, grab a drink, and then get right back to their seat. That's that's the challenge of being in, it, you know, at the top level of an organization. But for the UFL, I think they need to consider these venues. You know, maybe go to smaller venues. I mean, the Liberty Bowl, they're not packing the Liberty Bowl. You know, in in Birmingham, they're not filling. The, that wasn't no. Sold now out. they they've they pay, they've gotten smart. They've gone to UAB. Yeah, but and the old Legion Field was fifty nine thousand. Yeah, I mean, I think you need to kind of max it out at thirty thousand, a thirty thousand seat venue for these. Maybe less. Yeah, I mean, maybe maybe less. St. Louis has done a really good job. They play at. Uh, uh, the the old they Edward play Jones at the, Dome. The, yeah, and, um, and there's a look. There's a little rare. bit more of a burr up St. Louis's butt. They want to yeah. show the NFL you made a mistake in allowing the Rams to leave. And I get it. I feel bad for St. Louis. That's a good football city. Um, you know, if if there's ever uh, another deal where somebody has to go. St. Louis needs to be seriously considered. Absolutely, but it, you know that 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 St. Louis explosion there for for that Battle Hawk team is rare. I mean, that's yeah, that's not happening everywhere in in that league. But yeah, I mean, I think you need to downsize these venues and make them. You're not going to build stadiums for these teams, of course, but find some smaller venues and and you know do things around the game, around the event, whether it's a I don't know concert, something to to get people there. That's not about the football game. And then you see like a minor league baseball game, you know, because let's face it, this isn't the best level of football. So I think if you have something attached to this that isn't football, where maybe you get some people and then maybe they check out the game and and they like it. So they've sold out to TV and I get it. That's where most of the money's coming. But for a fan who wants to be there, who's told go bake in the sun you're not going back after they do that to you. No, no, that's, I mean, that, I don't know if I'll ever go back to <laughs> at least Birmingham. There's now. three hours of our uh, life we'll never get back. After the break, 
Vanderbilt Athletic Director Candace Lee will join us. First, we'll have stat of the day, which could be a scary proposition. Then she will join us. Uh, one of the things we'll talk about is the search that just concluded a couple of weeks ago where Mark Byington was hired as Vandy's new coach. Stay tuned. Nashville, get ready for the greatest show on turf. Electrifying, high-octane, non-stop spring football action. Starting at only $30. Don't miss the season opener this April 27th at Municipal Auditorium. Hi, I'm Jeff Fisher. The Nashville Cats are bringing arena football back to Nashville. Grab your tickets now at thenashvillecats.com and be part of the action. Star Physical Therapy was established in 1997 with one great mission, to serve. If you're hurting, don't wait to receive physical therapy. You don't need a referral to see their physical therapist, and early morning and evening appointments are available. Make the call to 615-673-1420 and get rid of that pain. Star Physical Therapy, the official health provider of Football Friday. You were in a crash. Yeah. Your kids were in a car with you. We're very lucky to even be telling this story to you. Nikki treated us like family, and she was very caring and loving, and I'm just so grateful for that. She was somebody I could trust, and being a veteran, that's so important to me. My kids are going to have a better life now because I don't have to worry about those expenses that we were out. Your family has really created a legacy of trust, and I would recommend you to anyone. Nashville Sounds Baseball is back in Hit City for the 2024 season. Spend your nights and weekends at the ballpark with weekly giveaways, fireworks shows, throwback deals, live music, and more. Top talent will take the field at First Horizon Park against the AAA Minnesota Twins, Baltimore Orioles, Atlanta Braves, St. Louis Cardinals, Cincinnati Reds, and more. Tickets start at just $10 and are available now at NashvilleSounds.com. We will see you in Hit City. Venture Express has been helping people in this area for more than 40 years. They're headquartered in Murfreesboro with over 30 years of dedicated fleets involving production, manufacturing, and corrugated experiences. They're an asset-based company with over 700 tractors, 4,000 trailers, and 800 drivers. If you need their help, dial them up 615-793-9500 or log on to VentureExpress.com. Top of the hour on a Friday, we're getting set to chat with Vanderbilt Athletic Director Candace Story Lee. But first, stat of the day brought to you by John English Antique Sports and Cards in Shelbyville. You can find them out there, 204 East Depot Street. They're open during the week, Tuesday through Friday. They'll be open this weekend, 10 a.m. to 5. Tomorrow, give them a call, 931-492-4304. All right, here we go with another stat of the day on a Friday. We're going NBA here. We're nearing the end of Victor Wembanyama's stellar rookie season in San Antonio. On the defensive end, he has totaled 252 blocks this season. Who has the most blocks for a rookie ever in the NBA? Okay, I'm, um, I'm going out on a big limb on this because... When this player was in college, he was a block shot machine. When he got to the pros, it was more about his offense. But I got to believe early on that he still had that. I'm going to go, for what it's worth, with Akeem Olajuwon. Final answer? That's my final answer. It's probably not right but I'm going with it. Well, I'm sure the viewers, a lot of the viewers might not be surprised, but it is Minute Ball. Oh, wow. So it's that same era. Yeah. 397 in 85, 86. It's a lot of blocks. Wow. He was seven feet, seven, I think. six inches tall. 
That's pretty tall. That's yeah, pretty tall. But yeah, what a year for Wimbanyama. I mean, he's he's not close to 397, but he's got a lot. Yeah. So I see somebody in the background under Candace, and so she may well be ready at this point. Um, I'm going to laugh. It's possible she needs some of the same help in getting on these Zoom links that I do. <laughs> uh, I see her in the background. Let me say this before we start the interview. Um, there will be certain things that she simply cannot talk about. Okay. She's not going to be able to tell you, uh, I interviewed so-and-so and so-and-so and so-and-so, but we ended up hiring X. Okay. You can't do that. So I'm going to try to ask when we get to the coaching search stuff, questions that are in generalities, because it's just, it's not fair to try to say, okay, well, did you interview John Calipari and how did Rick Patino go and blah, blah, blah. Candace, how you doing? I'm good, George. How are you doing? I'm good. So let me ask you this. Is your uh, technological wizard wizardry <laughs> good? Do you know how to get on these on your own or are you like me and need a little help? I mean, I don't want to offend you. So I'm going to say that uh, I appreciate that you need help, and sometimes I need help too. I'll I'll just say that. <laughs> Didn't look like you needed any help. Hey, thanks for joining us. Sure, sure. Thanks so for having me. Give me an overview. What were those? I, I guess ten days like while you were searching for a men's basketball coach. Oh man, I um, I made jokes that I very thankful to the airlines because I was flying the friendly skies and, and was never delayed and had safe travel. So I'm really grateful for that. It was, a, it was a lot, but it's, it's like that for any coaching search um, because it becomes something that you're singularly focused on. So it was a lot of travel. And um, as you can imagine, a lot of communication with a lot of different people it was also happening during um, the tournament. So I was, I was absolutely committed to being in Blacksburg every time our women's team played. That was important to me. Um, it's always important to me to support our student athletes, but man, thinking about what Shay Ralph and her team did, making it back to the NCAA tournament after a decade, I was determined to make sure that I worked around that game schedule. So I was also managing logistics around that, but it was a whirlwind, a, a fantastic whirlwind. And um, I love where we landed. Here's a question a lot of people asked me, uh -huh. and it's hard for me because I grew up in an era uh -huh. where Real Jim was one of the four or five most underrated, uh, absolute wild venues in America, like Creighton, like Providence, like Wichita State. And, and people would ask me, what do you think is the coach's perception of this job? What kind of answers did you get to that? So just from you're, – you're asking about what candidates thought about the opportunity? Yeah, and, and, and really when, when you would, you know, try to figure out, okay, is there an interest here or is there not an interest here, what kind of stuff did you learn about how coaches perceive this job? Yeah, no, it's a, it's a great question. I'll tell you, you know, as – so so the way that I approach this search too is – um, I mean, I had a lot of conversations, not just with potential candidates, but also with people who uh, I am close to in the game, um, alumni, like people who know the game to also get an idea. Uh, you know, I want to make sure that I'm always going in eyes wide open. And I was, um, I don't want to say surprised because, of course, I think it's a great job. But I'll tell you that the all of the opinions that I got affirmed that this is a great opportunity and it particularly today it's a great opportunity so um that's what i heard unanimously to be honest with you i heard that unanimously that other people also perceive it in that way this is a dumb question but you're used to that for they me they say there are no dumb questions <laughs> oh i'll prove otherwise so, <laughs> so give me the chance here uh, on it when when you do this we now have 
this method of talking to people, which mm-hmm. is Zoom, mm-hmm. can you, when, when you do a Zoom interview mm-hmm. and, and you're trying to figure out a coach and read what they're thinking and they're trying to read you as well, it's a, there's a little cat and mouse game going on. Right. Can you, can you learn much in a Zoom Well, I think Zoom is a great um, initial point of contact. Like to me, Zoom does not take the place of in-person communication, but um, I think you can, you know, I think prior to us becoming familiar with Zoom, my initial step in a coaching search would be a phone call. And we still used phone calls throughout this, but it's like Zoom is actually the next step because it allows you to see the person and then the next step would be in-person interaction. So I, I think you can tell uh, quite a bit in Zoom, but I don't think that it gives you the, the the whole picture. This is where you might be able to get a little more specific because mm-hmm. you hired him. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark Byington. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of tell me where it was. Well, l- l- let me try it this way. When you first set out with this, mm-hmm. Was he on your list or did this sort of evolve as people told you, you need to talk to this guy? So he, he was on my list at the beginning. So um, I started off with a list of, I, I don't even know. I mean, it was no more than 15 names for sure. I don't know, 12 to 15 names of, of people that at the onset I was interested in learning more about. Now, as the search went on, give or take, there might be a a couple names that come in and a couple names that I kind of take off as I'm wading through. And, and the truth is I, I listed, I listened to, I I tried to ensure there was no stone unturned. So I came in with a list of 12 to 15 and, and kicked the tires on many, many, many names. Mark's name was on that list from the very beginning. Where did he um, kind of win you over? Was there some magic sentence or moment where the pilot light went on and you said, oh, whoa, this guy's going to be here at the end? Well, I'll tell you that I tried it. Like I am, a, I'm very much a gut person and I try, um, I try not to be too impulsive because when I feel strongly about things, I want to act on them pretty quickly. I've, 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 um, I've learned to be very disciplined and thoughtful, um, and really test my gut. And, and I feel, um, more often than not, it, it has not steered me wrong, but I, I would say in the very initial conversation with Mark, I, I certainly heard things that deeply resonated with me. I shared, um, many of them when we had the press conference, you know, those those things that I was reeling off, those were things that he said that I wrote down in that very, very first conversation. And then those things were continuously re- reiterated throughout the search. Um, I'm a, I, I don't know that, I, I, what I can say is in the very first conversation, I knew that there was so much substance to him. I absolutely could see him in the role and, you know, that that began to dictate future conversations that we had. He has a very interesting background, mm-hmm. partly because of Bobby Crimmins, mm-hmm. who I've gotten to know a little bit. Bobby Crimmins, uh, for those who are not as old as me, took a Georgia Tech program that didn't exist in the 80s. And mm-hmm. all of a sudden it's John Spider Sally and it's Mark Price and it's Bruce Dalrymple. And this guy kind of grew up on a little bit of Bobby Crimmins. And mm-hmm. so that got my attention. The other thing that, that I kept hearing from people about him, once it got out that you looked like you were going to hire him and I contacted mm-hmm. some people, the mm-hmm. word I kept getting was this guy is a grinder. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Whatever your definition of grinder is, mm-hmm. I think it means he's going to work and he's probably going to outwork a lot of people. Mm-hmm. It's very clear what his work ethic is. It's very clear. And, you know, I, I made a I made a joke during the um, press conference that I was glad we were able to actually get the press conference in because he had hit the ground running. And, you know, I was I said that in a joking way. But the fact of the matter is he truly, truly hit the ground running. 
And so I think um, that reputation that he has of, of being a grinder or having a high work ethic, it's well earned because I, I've seen it um, honestly from the moment that I offered him the job and he accepted it. He has he is he has not. I don't think he sat down, to be honest with you. I do not think he sat down. And so, yeah, he he absolutely is a grinder. Yeah. Um Okay, let me let me think through here. One more thing on my end on mm-hmm. uh, on Mark, mm-hmm. um, the the James Madison win over Wisconsin mm-hmm. got a lot of people's attention uh, because Wisconsin has a style, as you know, it's really hard to play, mm-hmm. and they just beat the crap out of them. Mm-hmm. So that got a lot of people's attention. But then Duke sort of did what Duke can do two mm-hmm. days later. Did that shy you away at all, the fact that the Duke game was kind of a blowout? It did not. I mean, I certainly, I mean, no, nobody <laughs> nobody expects or plans to be blown out. You know, the reality is that I know anything can happen in March, but um, I, I don't think there's an athletic director out there that's making a decision off of one game. Um, I don't, I don't do that. I had had the benefit of, of spending Um, quite a bit of time with him, but also watching a lot, a lot of film on his team. So that was probably not the best day at the office, but no, it had nothing to do with the decision that I made or, and it did not cause me any discomfort. Candace, this is Billy Derrick. And I think it's fair to say that technologically he's ahead of me. (laughs) I mean, it's kind of fair to say that about most people, right? (laughs) No disrespect, of course. Well, I mean, you the, started that. Yeah. The <laughs> what, what? What do they say? The 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 bottom, the floor is very very low. <laughs> <laughs> Candice, I uh, hope you're doing well. Good to good to chat again. Thank um, you, you know, I thought it was really really cool that that Coach Byington went over to to one of the frat houses, and mm-hmm. of course, your team there at the social media did a great job of getting that out to the fans. I think the fans loved it. Yeah. Uh, students, I I would say loved it as well. Um, when it comes to the students and, and even just the fans in general, mm-hmm. how do you attack you know a, a, a fresh start you know through your department in plans of getting students there and and kind of bringing it back to what it was that you know late in the season I think in year four of Stackhouse where the students were such a big part of of that arena and and the fact that they they should be. Oh yeah, I mean we actually we absolutely agree with you that they should be. You know, I, it makes me think. First, what I would say is that. Um, there were so many things that Mark said throughout the process that struck me, but he very early on, um, our conversations were so natural and there were things that I didn't even have to prompt that he would, he would jump right in. And, and there were, there were two things that stuck in my mind from the very beginning. He talked a lot about engagement with different groups, right? Alumni, the fan base, um, students, he was proactive in talking about why that was so important. And of course, we believe that that's so important. You know, I um, I laughed. I was telling somebody this the other day that you know, I was actually in D.C. I went to D.C. Um, so the week that we announced um, Mark, which would have been that Thursday, right? We had, now we had the press conference on Thursday. I was in D.C. Tuesday night until Thursday morning. He and I met up in D.C. and we flew back together. And on that flight, I was working on my remarks for the press conference. He had no idea what I was going to say. I had in, I had no idea what he was going to say. And and it looked like we were just in complete lockstep because we are. And and I, I loved that because, you know, that's certainly how I expect it to be. That's how we're going to work very hard to have it be every day. But he understands, as I do, the importance of having a full support to get this program where we all believe it can be. And students are a huge part of that. The entire fan base is a huge part of that. And, you know, I think it starts with, um, it starts with just open hands and arms, right? And making everybody feel uh, welcome and know that they are a part of that th- this is not something we're going to be able to do in isolation. And quite frankly, even if we could do it in isolation, I would not want to, nor would coach B. So I think where we're going to do it, it's not, a, this is not magic, right? This is just about consistent effort, consistent effort and showing over time 
that 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 these relationships are really important to us. And I I prefer to show who we are and what we're about with actions as opposed to words. So I I would just ask for people to pay attention because I think it will be very clear. Well, another thing that I think is important to you guys is all the construction going on right now. And as you can see right here, this is the, uh, of course, not finished yet, but this is what, you know, that right there is going to look like um, eventually. And obviously you got the basketball facility in there. Just kind of give fans uh, an idea of where you guys are at. Um, and then the south end zone, of course, is is uh, is looking a lot different than it has uh, in the past as well. So kind of give people an idea of where you guys are at and where, you know, you, you hope to go. Yeah, I mean, we're really excited. So we, I would say just to start specifically with the projects that you've shown, that the north end zone, which is where the basketball operations center will be housed, that's the side you're showing right here that's closest to the Marriott. Um, I mean, that is, it is, it's a real building now. It's it's beautiful to see. It's a real building that we will be ready to to occupy the outside of it for football season. And then, you know, our plan will be to move in from a basketball standpoint when practice is getting ready to begin in the fall. And if for those people who were in our stadium during football season, those end zones will be dramatically different when you sit in the stands. You're now looking at the south end zone where there's actually steel coming up. For the longest time, we were having to excavate rock and, right. and, and clear things out. So it just it took a long time. And for people who didn't really know what it was going to look like, it's probably hard to put that vision together. But now, you know, I, it's, it's starting to really take shape. And we are we always were on track for the north end zone, the basketball side to for that facility to be open in this fall. And then the south end zone, which is the image that you're showing now, that will be open for football season the following fall. So for the fall of 25. And then I think baseball people, you know, we get questions all the time about that as well. And, and here's kind of a look at, you know, the future of Hawkins Field. Mm -hmm. um, Timeline's still still good there and anything anything change, uh, you know, on, on, on at least the baseball side of it. And tennis, too, as you can see, a beautiful new tennis complex going up. So there's a lot. So here. So it, I know it's so hard for people to keep track. And I, I have to remember that because for those of us who are in it every day and talking about it, you know, it's top of mind. So here, here's the thing with our projects. So the answer, the short answer is yes to what you said. You know, the very first project that will be complete is actually at Legends. So out for, for our men's and women's golf programs. Um, I was out there for our senior golf banquet, our senior golfers banquet um, on Sunday. And um, and I live close to there and it was just, it's been remarkable to watch it come up, but that project is actually almost done. That will be the first completed project in Bandy United. Then of course you have the two end zones and we know when those will be complete. And this year, calendar year 24, you will see the actual breaking ground of tennis and baseball and then we are we're really excited about volleyball and and now is not the time to talk about that but that all of that's coming very very soon so i look forward to sharing more about it and showing renderings and just helping try to keep people on track just i'm i'm super appreciative to our team and all of the 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 people and the entities that we have to collaborate with to get this done um, it's a huge undertaking, and we're being very, very aggressive. But we think it's long overdue, so why not? And if you're gonna, if you're gonna have a pardon my mess sign, you might as well have a few of them, right? Yeah, and get right. Done as quickly as you can. I got one more on the construction, and sure. if we have gotten questions about this. And right now, baseball, you can enter through Memorial to get to a baseball game, or am I wrong in that? That you um, that you can enter through Memorial. Yeah. So if you have, say, you have a ticket to a baseball game, you can only enter through the right field, or can you enter through Memorial? You can enter through the right field. The okay, right. So field that's it. Are there? Can... Yeah, because you know, I think we've seen one home SEC series, and you know, it was great crowds. Are there changes to add another entrance, or is that you know the the right field entrance, you know, in so, front of the garage, is that going to maintain be the only one? So I guess we technically have two entry points right now, right? We have where you can enter to get to the infield, which is coming off a of 25th. You can also enter through the outfield. Right, Listen, right. It changes all the time. But here's what I would ask, or I would say to people is we try to proactively communicate if there are major changes coming. 
we control, we don't always control when that's going to happen, right? Because again, we have so much construction going on and we're trying to make it as seamless as possible, but are, are like very, very much appreciative of people's patience because it could change week to week. We even saw that in football where um, some of the entry points changed because they had to. It's really important to me that for as long as possible and for the entire time, if possible, that we're still able to utilize our facilities while we're building around, which means we are going to have to be very flexible. So I would hesitate. And honestly, the answer today is different from what it was two weeks ago and what it will be two weeks from now. I hesitate to give you a, a, a specific. I'm one of the main people who's raising my hand saying, where do I go? And which, <laughs> which door? And I'm here every day. So I know it's hard for people who are coming to campus, but I'm so grateful. So I would just say, please, please be patient with us. And thank you for being patient because it could change moment by moment. Candace, last thing, and this is a stupid question. <laughs> Reporters, people like me, mm -hmm. our job when you're in a coaching search, mm -hmm. whether it's you, the Titans, the Preds, whoever, is to try to figure out where the decision maker is. Aha, she's in Harrisburg, Virginia, and let's link that to such and such. Mm -hmm. And over the years, I could write a book on things that I have heard. I've heard people trying to tail John Ingram's plane <laughs> and get a get a tail number and that you know they reported him in Wichita to meet with Greg Marshall and it wasn't true and blah blah blah. Was there anything funny like that during this search where you're like, oh, my God, what are they doing to figure out what I'm up to? Uh, I mean, <laughs> I uh, there were a couple of times where I thought I was being incognito and I clearly was not because people yelled my name. And it is hard to be incognito when you're six, three. And yes, um, that can that can be challenging. I, I I don't I'm not going to point to anything specific. I'll tell you, I was in many different cities, really fortunate to always make it back to Blacksburg. And I love the great interest that people had in this search and in all of our searches, because it means that people care. And that's important to me. Yeah. And so I'm grateful for that. Hey, thank you for coming on. Uh, I know there's certain things you couldn't talk about with this. But I also knew there were things that you would talk about, and I really appreciate that. No, I, I appreciate you having me on. The thing that I would say is I'm never, I mean, I, certainly my goal is never to be like secretive or I do want to um, honor and be discreet um, about certain aspects because that is what I assured everybody who was involved that I would do. And that was important to me. Um, the thing that I would want Commodore Nation to know is that um, people think really highly about the thing that we all care about. And that's a chance to, to be successful at Vanderbilt. And people think it's possible. The resources are here. The care is here. The fan base is here. And, and I'm really excited about the future. And so I thank people for hanging with us. I think people thank people for hanging with me and my team. And I'm excited for uh, what Memorial is going to be like in uh, in the coming years on both the men's and the women's side. And I'm just excited about the future of this athletics program. Really very much appreciate the support. One of your predecessors, the great Roy Kramer, mm -hmm. was like the director of the CIA in these <laughs> searches. He would meet with people in places you could never imagine. Oh, yeah. And young reporter, it became like a game to me yeah. to try to stump him to be able to say, yeah, Coach Kramer is in so-and-so, and he's meeting such-and-such, and there was one victory. I'll tell you about it next time we see each other. You'll get okay. a good laugh out of it. Well, I look, I look forward to that, and I will say there were some interesting locations that I met people in. Oh, I, I, I will yeah. say that, and then okay. learning to be flexible, um, and sometimes having to pivot on a dime. That did happen. That I did love happen. it. I love it. Thanks for doing this. Thank you so much, George. I appreciate you. Same here. And Vandy Bill Athletic Director Candace oh. Lee. Did Thanks, we, Candace. Did we just we just X her out there? That was that, that's my bad. I, <laughs> that was not me. <laughs> All right now. Okay. Candace, thank you. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. Take care. You too. All right. Bye bye.
Candace Lee joining us to talk about the search that just ended uh, with the hiring of the new basketball coach, Mark Byington. After the break, a good friend of mine to tell you about a golf tournament and what he's trying to do to help make this a better community. Then we'll have plaster bed of the day, and then we'll call it a week. Stay with us. As the trusted premier custom home builder in Middle Tennessee, Donnelly Timmons has over 20 years of experience in the industry. Whether you're looking to build your dream home or renovate your current home, their team will ensure that every client and every remodel is unique, luxurious, and completed on time within budget. Founders Dustin Timmons and Joey Donnelly have over 25 years of construction experience in the Nashville area. Together, they have completed projects in Forest Hills, Oak Hill, Green Hills, Franklin, and Brentwood. Dustin and Joey believe that communication is the most important aspect of all construction projects. Therefore, they personally manage each project themselves and are involved in job site activities on a daily basis. Their commitment to quality and integrity has earned them an outstanding reputation among their clients. Contact them to set an appointment for a free consultation or to view some of their completed projects. Give them a call at 615-456-7983 or log on to DonleyTimmons.com. It was the most horrible experience that any mother could ever go through. I knew that I needed to get help. My friend, she immediately said, you need to call Bart Durham. And you guys were there within an hour. You guys are like family for us. Yeah, sure is nice to connect with the people that you're doing your best to help. The George Plaster Show is Nashville's best sports talk, 2 to 4 p.m. Monday through Friday on Twitter, Facebook, and YouTube. There's a podcast version available on Spotify and Apple Podcast. Looking for more than just awards and trophies? Southern Trophy House is your one-stop solution. For over 60 years, their team has created lasting impressions with a personalized touch. From embroidery to screen-printed apparel to corporate awards, signs, and name badges, they have everything you need to keep your brand shining bright. With their knowledgeable customer service team, you can relax as they create, produce, pack, and ship merchandise and awards on time and on budget. That includes etched crystal awards, custom cut acrylic, name badges, embroidered Richardson ball caps, banners, screen printed t-shirts, laser engraved Yeti cups, and knives. Recognize your hardworking team from Southern Trophy House, where they do their best to help you recognize your best. Located at 2705 Nolensville Pike in Nashville, give them a holler, 615 615- 256-7295. Visit southerntrophy.com, Southern Trophy House, for all your personalization and recognition needs. You know, over the years, you run into certain people who just have incredible hearts, who try to do so much good. And when you run into those tri- kind of people, you try to help them any way you can. Um, Marcus Manise is a member of the downtown Nashville Kiwanis Club uh, that I belong to. He has a foundation that does amazing things. I'm going to play dumb. And I'm going to let him tell you about his foundation and a fundraiser that he's trying to do to help that foundation. Marcus, how are you? Hey, welcome, George. Thanks for inviting me on your show, man. I really appreciate it. Uh, hey, you realize this will be the first time you and I ever see each other in a jacket? sport coat? Yeah, you always tell me about that at Kiwanis, about wearing my sports coat. So uh, I hate I missed today, but this was the coat I was going to wear today. So Very nice. I wear it on your show today. So thanks, George, for having me. 
Uh, to your guests who don't know who I am, I'm Marcus Unice, founder and executive director of Stronger Than My Father Youth and Family Service here in the Nashville and Antioch community. Uh, our organization has been around since 2011. Uh, our focus is to help young men who do not have a biological father have the opportunity to live out their God-given purpose. Uh, we provide additional services through our after-school program services, and then we do a number of community effort works to help families that are in need. So, uh, you know, I love mentorship as part of my life over the past 21 years. And it's just an opportunity to help young men who don't have dads have the best opportunity to be productive. And that's what I'm very, very passionate about. And um, that's where God led me to start this nonprofit 11 years ago. And in two weeks, uh, we will have our fourth annual Give a Child Hope Golf Classic will be held at the Franklin Bridge. Uh, our shotgun registration is at 12 o'clock and then we tee off at one. So. Uh, all our information is on our website at strongerthanmyfather.org. So your guests can look to see if this is a tournament they want to play in. But all the funds is, uh, that's raised is continue to help us impact the fatherless and then help our young people uh, with their growth, through literacy, through our after-school program services. So uh, great cause. But like I said, our, our goal is always to try to find a way to impact the fatherless. Next year, when we do the uh, Plaster and Friends Celebrity Bowling Night, we will again do an underprivileged kids uh, deal from about 3 to 5 p.m. Uh, our mutual friend Bob Lyons yeah. was involved in that a year ago. And the folks at Last Minute Toy Store were so moved by some of the things Marcus tries to do that they gave him, good Lord, how many footballs and basketballs that no, night. no, was it like five hundred? Close. To it looked five. like you stuffed them all in a <laughs> in a trunk. Yeah, in your car, your car. You're lucky you didn't get pulled over that. Yeah, night. yeah, I couldn't even see, but uh, we was able to give them out. Um, I just did not know kids would be so happy to have a football and basketball and seeing the smiles on their faces. So I thank you and Bob for all the work you guys do to bless those kids with footballs and basketballs. We was able to give them out to an after school program. Uh, our program director, Renee Jones, helped us tremendous with that. Just seeing kids walking out the center with a football and basketball really changed their lives. And you could just see them diving into the bags, just grabbing those footballs and basketballs. So I look forward to um, partnering with you again with this initiative in November. Marcus, I think the thing that really gets to me is, look, I'm not going to pretend to know all the circumstances. Yeah, I didn't grow up with the issues that a lot of these kids that you're helping have. I had a great mom and dad. Uh, I miss them, but you know, they, they, they did unbelievable stuff for a kid, me who didn't deserve it. And we don't always know what it is they're dealing with. Mm -hmm. Uh, you do because you deal with it closer than I do. And, it's all about just giving them half a chance. Yeah, I think it's just giving them, with these young men that's in our Stronger Sons Mentorship Program, just giving them hope. A lot of these boys just want somebody to spend some time with them. Um, they're looking for their father. Unfortunately, sometimes the father is absent. But these boys are just looking for somebody to spend time with. So with our Stronger Sons Mentorship Program, we meet every other Saturday for at least two to three, sometimes four hours on a Saturday. Important wisdom, knowledge. Uh, in these young men, um, golf tournament. I mean, I see not golf tournament, but we uh, taught them skills how to barbecue. I think every father's want to teach his son the value of barbecuing. And then the week prior, we took them to the golf range, teaching them how to play golf. So it's just skills, man. These boys just need to learn. But also knowing that there are some males out here in Nashville and in the Franklin area that wants to spend time with these young men. And that's why uh, I enjoy meeting them every two weeks. And I have two sons. And my sons are there as well. So it's kind of like a big family. But we spend that time with these young men because we want to give them hope and we want to encourage them and hope that one day when they become fathers, they're there for their children. And that's why Strong and My Father exists. Marcus, uh, for those who may just be joining us watching this live, mm -hmm. give that website again that they can check out the details on the golf tournament. Yeah, check us out at strongerthanmyfather.org. It's information about all the programming services that we provide. And in the middle of the website, you'll see the link for the golf tournament. Uh, we still need golfers. Uh, we need sponsors. And we will be at the Franklin Bridge on August, I mean, April 29th uh, 
registration at 12 o'clock. So I hope, uh, I'm hoping George still can do a live show from there uh, to highlight what we continue to do. And it's, it's people like you, George, that continues to help us to spread the word that fatherhood matters and that we want to continue to show these young men that kids um, deserve an opportunity. These boys deserve an opportunity to have a better life. And I think we both are tired of seeing kids on television with bad stuff. We need to start highlighting kids that's doing good work, uh, kids that's, you know, making good grades and being positive in the community. And that's what we want to highlight here stronger than my father. Amen. Marcus, have a good weekend. Thank you for coming on. All right. Thanks, George. Thanks for the opportunity. It's a good man right there. Marcus Manis. Uh, if you can help him, please do, because what he is doing is so worthy. Uh, and it, it does improve our community. It may be one child at a time, but it's one child at a time, and he's doing it. And I admire what he's doing. Yeah, that's that's good stuff. He's uh, seems like a really really awesome guy, and uh, looking forward to maybe not playing golf, but doing our show potentially potentially out there because I'm not very good. No, that <laughs> makes two of us. Now let's get to what we think we're good at, but. Uh, maybe not. Uh, last night, tough, tough, uh, tough result, but better the day. Brought to you by Bart Durham Injury Log and McCall, 615-242-9000 or log on to bartdurham.com. Here is what happened last night. Ugh. The Kings were only favored by one and they did not win. God. So that's basically a money line. That's, they, a, that's a money line bet. They were down 23 in the first half. Rallied to get to within six at the half, and then I'll be honest, I fell asleep. <laughs> I have no idea what happened in the second half. So, no surprise that this is what I'm going to give you tonight. Oh, yeah. The Preds. This is a game they got to win. They yeah. really need this. If they're going to finish in the seven hole, I think they got to win tonight in Chicago, and I think they will. I don't think Chicago's all that interested at this point. I think they're ready to get their season over with. Uh, no playoffs in their future. Uh, Preds tonight in Chicago. That's where we're going. Let's do it, Preds. Okay. It. Monday, an interesting football show. We're going to talk to a college graduate who's trying to get on an NFL roster but is not one of the big names. He's been to a lot of the workouts. He's tried out for a pro team. He's going to tell us what this is like when you don't have Oklahoma or Alabama or Michigan behind you, but instead you have something more like Austin P or Bellerman or whoever. You're going to want to see this. Hope you have a good weekend. We'll see you Monday.